Hello, and welcome to Not Very Scary Stories. This will be our second haunted history episode. Today we'll have three shorter stories of haunted locations. I'd like to leave these up to you whether you'd like to believe it, as I've said before that the point of this brand's video series at first was to prove whether ghosts exist or not. I still stand behind the sentiment that these could all be fake or real. You can decide for yourself. I wasn't positive on where to start this, so for these first few episodes I used a list called The History Behind 40 of the Most Haunted Places in America to start with, then proceeded with research and stories that are backed by witnesses or more than one report. I'd like to thank you guys for the support thus far on all the platforms you can find us on, including YouTube. I'd also like to remind everyone that if you have any scary stories or experiences you'd like to share, email me at darkskygamenews at gmail.com and tell me how you'd like to be credited. I'm Zenith Darksky, and I'll be your host tonight. Enjoy. The Winchester Mystery House has surely earned the name. After numerous reported hauntings and sightings of ghosts, the Winchester House may potentially be one of the most haunted houses in the world, let alone America. Admittedly, it's probably one of the only houses built precisely for this very reason. Sarah Winchester, wife of the one and only William Wirt Winchester, the treasurer of the Winchester Repeating Arms Company, commissioned the building of her mysterious house after her husband died of tuberculosis and her infant daughter died shortly after. She was told by a medium that she would be haunted her whole life by the ghosts of those killed with Winchester rifles unless she started building non-stop. Now, whether it was a prank or the truth, that's exactly what she started to do. In 1884, she purchased an unfinished farmhouse in the Santa Clara Valley and began building the mansion. Carpenters were hired and worked on the house day and night until it became a seven-story mansion. She didn't use an architect, and she added on to the building recklessly. So the home contains numerous oddities such as doors and stairs that go nowhere, windows overlooking other rooms, and stairs with odd risers. Many accounts attribute these oddities to her belief in ghosts. And some account some of the paranormal events to the creepy build of the house. I won't go into much more detail in the actual history of the building because there are so many sources that go into extreme detail on these things. We're going to focus on the haunted history. So let's start with some of the actual and terrifying stories. Like a number of employees and a few visitors claim to have crossed paths with Clyde, a mustached man sometimes seen pushing a wheelbarrow in the basement or trying to repair the fireplace in the ballroom, usually encounters with Clyde all start with visitors reporting an actor that is repairing things around the grounds with white overalls and a mustache. Usually the immediate response from the staff is that they don't have any staff member that meets that description. Nowadays, they'll probably just tell you, Oh, that's just Clyde. He's not a staff member. He's a ghost. Some employees who worked at the mansion are said to have stayed on after their deaths. There are footsteps heard shuffling to and from Mrs. Winchester's room. Her workers, perhaps? Perhaps a laborer is what a present-day worker encountered in the Hall of Fires, so named for its many fireplaces. Prior to the mansion opening for tours one day, the worker was on a ladder. He felt a tap on his shoulder, turned, and no one was there. The worker refocused his attention on his task. That's when he felt what seemed like a hand pressing against his back. He was still the only one in the room, but not for long. The worker got out of there fast, leaving the otherworldly laborer alone to handle the job. The 1906 earthquake that destroyed San Francisco also caused serious damage to the house. 
Sarah was actually trapped in a room until her workers were able to set her free. Shaken by her experience, Mrs. Winchester had the room sealed. It stayed that way until 2016 when the room was opened and added to tours, one of which a guide gathered visitors in the room to explain the history and point out the objects found inside more than 100 years after being sealed. The guide heard a loud sigh in the hallway and went outside to bring in the straggler. There was no one, except for what looked like a ghostly form gliding around the corner. The guide quickly followed. She still didn't see anyone, yet she heard another sigh. Perhaps Sarah used the sealed room as a refuge from all the tourists. Ever since Houdini came to the house in 1924 during his nationwide tour to debunk spiritualism, other experts have followed. Winchester Mystery House has thrown out the welcome mat for paranormal investigator Zach Baggins, noted psychic Sylvia Brown, TK, and famed medium James Van Pratt, who channeled Sarah at a seance dinner. He claimed that she expressed happiness that the house had so many visitors, but was it actually Sarah, or was it someone or something else? The Lizzie Borden house was the scene of the murders of Andrew and Abby Borden, who were found in 1892 covered in blood and beaten to death with an axe. Lizzie, the Borden's daughter, was the prime suspect in the case. The charges against Lizzie were later dropped due to lack of physical evidence and no one else was ever charged with the murders. The case remains unsolved. It has operated as a bed and breakfast since 1996 under the ownership of Martha McGinn, who inherited the house. Martha's grandparents purchased the house on August 4th, 1948. According to Martha McGinn, the room where Lizzie's stepmother, Abby Borden, was found murdered it is the most requested room of the bedrooms at the bed and breakfast. There are reports that the fire alarm has a tendency to go off in this room once in a while around 3 or 4 a.m. in the morning. Normal ghost stories are also spread around such as cold spots and strange cloudy figures and photos taken in the Andrew Borden room and throughout the house on tour. There are also reports of phantom cats appearing and once in a while even jumping across people's bodies while they slept. Some stories even claim they've been choked during their sleep, or even that they heard knuckles cracking next to them while they slept. Perhaps it could have been a spirit with murderous intent, intent on revenge. Now home to the Utah State Historical Society, the Denver and Rio Grande Railroad Depot was built by George Gould for the Rio Grande Western Railroad and was a travel hub in the early 1900s. It's also said to be home to various spirits, hauntings, and paranormal phenomena. Details vary depending on who you talk to, but it's agreed that a woman wearing an early 1900s dress is often seen in the women's restroom of the depot. She's wearing a large hat and long dress, both in dark purple. The woman is quite beautiful, but appears terribly sad. It is now said that her spirit haunts the depot, filled with jealousy and rage to antagonize and frighten patrons. It's also said that the woman and her fiance were at the train depot and got into an argument. In the heat of the fight, either the purple lady or her fiancé threw her engagement ring onto the tracks. Sobbing and distraught, the woman went down onto the tracks to find the ring and was hit by an oncoming train. She died instantly. Now, she's seen in the restroom as well as many other locations in the train depot. The first known sighting was back in 1947 when a female train passenger stopped to use the restroom. She claimed to have seen a woman wearing a purple dress and a large purple hat in the style of the early 1900s. Also, employees report hearing singing and footsteps at night 
after the restaurant is closed. A security guard also reported hearing footsteps on the mezzanine at around the same time every night. Each time, he would race up to the stairs to face the perpetrator, only to find that no one was there. One night, he decided to hide on the mezzanine and wait to see who was playing pranks on him. He heard the footsteps approach him, but didn't see anyone. Then he felt someone brush up against him, and the footsteps faded away as if the person had walked away. There's also supposedly a spirit of a man who once worked on the station. One story says that he was killed in a terrible accident when he was working on a tunnel between the station and the nearby power plant. This ghost has been known to move things around and play pranks on employees and patrons. One security guard stated that when he went down to check the cellar one night, the lights were flickering on and off by themselves. He then felt the presence of an unknown entity, and suddenly the lights stopped, and the feeling was gone. <laughs>